everyone hi <laughs> i greet you in the most powerful name of our lord jesus christ and savior welcome to divine writings my name is Leng Hue. i thank you so much for tuning in um can we pray father in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ and savior thank you lord jesus christ for dying for us on the cross thank you lord jesus christ for being so patient with us I thank you, Jesus Christ, that you are still interceding for us even today, Lord, when we are so ignorant of your word and we are so even ignorant of the times that we are in. We thank you, Father, for sending us Jesus Christ for dying for us. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior, we thank you, Lord, we bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Uh, today's topic we are dealing with um, the seventh seal. The lamb is opening the seventh seal. And um, in this seventh seal, we have um, seven angels and the seven trumpets. So we're going to be starting with um, the first um, angel and the first trumpet. But before I get the uh, we are living in a time whereby we are supposed to be engaging the enemy in prayer. We are supposed to be praying without ceasing day in, day out. We are supposed to be in our armor and uh, praying. Um, if anything that Jesus Christ gave us, is a weapon of prayer prayer changes things it changes everything there's nothing that prayer cannot change there is our weapon and that weapon is strong and um, the blood of jesus christ the blood of Jesus Christ heals. And um, the book of Revelation is telling us that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. That is what the word of God is saying. And um, it is so painful that um, the enemy is, is, is out there devouring Christians because the chaos that you are seeing in the world right now, it's about destroying Christians because the devil doesn't care about the people that he has already destroyed. He doesn't care about those. The rush, rush that you see happening in the world today it is because the devil wants to kill mostly Christians, making sure that they don't make it to heaven, making sure that they forget that the blood of Jesus Christ heals. They forget that when we drink the blood of Jesus Christ and when we eat the flesh of Jesus Christ, we are saved, we are healed from whatever sickness, whatever disease, and we are forgiven our sins. So the enemy managed to cause Christians, the children of the Most High God, to forget. Sorry, Bazalan, I need to do something here. He managed to cause... Um, Christians to forget about the power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ and the power that is in the flesh of Jesus Christ and the power that is in the fountain of the rivers of living waters. He has managed to convince some Christians out there that 
the blood of Jesus Christ is not powerful enough. So now we need to protect ourselves. We need to um, rely on the weapons of the devil to save ourselves. And those weapons are so destructive. They are so destructive. Some of you Christians out there, you may not be able to go back to what you used to be. However, I know that God is merciful. He is very loving. And he also knows that we are ignorant of the weapons of darkness. So um, I believe that as we continue to pray, those that are praying out there, he will be merciful and he will heal you from the poison that you have taken into your system. The blood of Jesus Christ heals. And even if it was not going to heal me, even if I was not going to be healed, I will, you know, die. I will still not take that poison into my body. Even if I were not going to be able to work, I was not going to be able to, to have a business. I was not going to be able to go into the shop and buy something to eat or to clothe myself. Even if it means that, I will still not take that poison into my body. Because people have spoken, not just people, people that are professional in this field. They know what is happening with the poison that they are busy uh, uh, in, 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 in ingesting in, into our systems. They know that that thing is poisonous. But what are we doing? We are running straight to this poison and we are taking it into our system. And the reason why the devil is doing this, it's because he knows that his time is near. He knows that he needs more Christians in hell with him. And he knows that there's still going to be a judgment of God whereby a lot of people will die. So he wants to know that, he, he, he wants to make sure that when that time comes, he has, you know, retrieved many people to himself. So he wouldn't be caring what um, will be happening when the wrath of God is poured out, when these seven trumpets are being blown and sicknesses and diseases, they begin to, to fall over the earth. That's the reason why. And I just pray that we Christians out there, we will begin to listen more to what God is saying. We will begin to rely on um, the word of God more than we are relying on ourselves, than we are relying on um, the Babylonian system, than we are relying on the kings of this earth. We all know who the kings of this earth are. <sighs> we are reading um, from... Um, Revelation chapter 8, we are reading from verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. This silence is not your normal kind of silence. There is something in this silence. There is something scary that is about to happen. Verse 2, and I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and um, to them were given seven trumpets. 
And another angel came and stood um, at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him um, much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And um, the smoke of the incense, which came um, with prayers of uh, the saints, ascended up before God out of the um, angel's hand. And uh, the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of um, the altar and cast it into the earth. And um, there were voices and um, thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And um, the seven angels um, which hit the seven trumpets prepared themselves. Here we see an angel having a golden censer, having um, incense. He was given incense, much incense, and um, he mixed it with prayers of the saints. There is prayers of who? Of Christians. And um, the last time I, I checked, um, prayers, um, when you pray, it's, it's just words. It's you talking. There's, there's nothing um, uh, a tangible day. Like when I'm talking right now, when I pray, I do the same thing. I, I, I talk. And it's just words that are coming out. So how come the angel now is mixing the, uh, uh, the incense with the prayers of the saints? Does this mean that our prayers are tangible? It's something that you can touch. It's something that you can see. It's something to me that has maybe even a color. <laughs> I would love to think that. It might have color. But definitely sure, when the angel took that incense and the prayers, it for me, it's a definite show that our prayers, they become tangible when they get out of our mouths and they shoot straight to God. So meaning what? It means that our prayers are what? Are powerful. There's power in prayer. Because the very same prayers, they are mixed with the incense and they are poured out with fire, fire incense and they are poured out with into earth and what happens an earthquake happens you know some um, fallen angels they um, are convincing the people of God about you know um, the climate change and they are making memes to combat it. I believe that God is the most powerful God ever. And um, the, 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 the misbehaving of um, the weather and the earth and, and everything. It's the things that are written in the Bible. They are here in the Bible. And if God knew that, um, you know, when... Um, the cows are fatting uh, that was going to bring some kind of an effect into the climate. He would have done something about it. He wouldn't expect um, some fallen angels to take care of it. But um, with everything that is happening in the world, they have fooled everyone to believe that um, climate change is due to everything that they have mentioned. It's not that. All those things that are in the Bible. So you Christians out there, open your eyes, open your ears of the spirit. Allow God to open your eyes and your ears of your spirit. 
and to remove the ignorance that is shrouding you out there. And my sisters and brothers out there, don't follow blindly. Don't follow blindly. We 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 have true shepherds and um, and 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 false shepherds out there. There's there's plenty of them, and I think that God is now opening our eyes to see these things. Who is false and who is real? Because those real ones, they will tell us about the power of the living God, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, the power that is in the flesh of Jesus Christ. When you eat the flesh of Jesus Christ, when you drink the blood of Jesus Christ, when you drink from the uh, uh, a fountain of the rivers of living waters, what would that do to you as a person that cleanses you, that washes you clean, you become whiter than a snow, and you become even more powerful and even more dangerous. This is what our shepherds are supposed to be preaching out there. No, but... Uh, our shepherds, they are leading us into taking poison into our systems. Don't follow blindly. Don't follow blindly. Read the word of God. Read the word of God. And you know, even before the opening of these uh, seals, You know, chapter one of Revelation up to chapter, I think up to chapter four, it's talking about uh, repentance. Jesus Christ is telling us to repent. And he's even outlining as to what we are supposed to be repenting from. He's instructing us because as much as he was writing to those churches, that also applies to us. As he was writing to those churches for that particular times, it still applies today that we need to return to a, to our first love. We need to stop eating food that is sacrificed to idols. You go and read the book of Revelation. It will tell you all these things. And for me, I'm still saying today, there was a warning to us to say we need to be vigilant. We need to stay out of sin. Because when you look at those four books of Revelation, the first four books of Revelation, they are talking about what? As repenting. It's repentance, repentance, repentance. In all those four chapters. And when we repent, when we truly repent, what does that mean? We are not going to be deceived. No deception will come to us, will come near us. No sicknesses will come near our dwelling. The devil will try to make you think that Jesus Christ does not heal. The blood of Jesus Christ does not heal. He will try to do that. He did that with me when I got sick. He did that. But I kept on pleading the blood of Jesus Christ and declaring that the blood of Jesus Christ is powerful. Jesus Christ is powerful. He heals. I didn't go to anyone to, 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 to poke me with some whatever to test what was in my blood. I knew that the blood of Jesus Christ is in my system. My DNA is of Jesus Christ. Should Jesus Christ decide that I will die of that sickness, then I will die of that sickness. But I wouldn't let anyone else to come and di dictate to me and tell me what I was suffering from. Because I know that there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And my DNA is made up of the blood of Jesus Christ. 
That is what most Christians out there have forgotten. Most Christians today are being led astray because they have forgotten about the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ heals. And if you are called by his name, you are healed. No sicknesses, no diseases will enter your body will enter you see the devil will try he will he will he, he will he, he, he will bring those sicknesses to you so that you panic and then you run to these devils dens and then they come they dictate to you and they tell you that uh, you're suffering from that from that and you believe them So, my brothers and sisters, let's repent. Let's go back to God. And I believe that God is so merciful. God is so loving. He will heal us. Even those that have taken the poison into their system, he can still heal us. If we turn back to him, he can still heal us. Let's go to the first um, uh, trumpet and the first angel. You know, that is in verse seven of uh, Revelation eight. Um, the first angel sounded, and um, there followed um, hail and fire mingled with blood, and they um, were cast upon the earth. And um, the third part of um, trees was bent up, and all green grass was bent up. You see, when the weather is misbehaving and the weather is not doing what we are used to, it is because of us and our sin, sins. We are not repenting. We are so evil. We don't want to listen to God. We don't want to do the will of God. We want to do our own will. And now... The fallen angels will come. They will dictate to you and tell you that um, it's climate change. It's what, 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 and this is what you need to do, and and that and that and this and that and that. Please read your Bibles. Verse two. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea and the third part of um the sea became blood um when uh, uh, uh the third uh, 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 part of the sea becomes blood um and it continues in verse 9 it says um the third part of the creatures which were in the sea <clears throat> excuse me uh and had life died and the third part of the um, ships were destroyed. We finding what we finding, uh, sea uh, uh, animals being destroyed, and that means what the less um, supply of what of seafood because most of them they die. The third part of them they die, and we find um, uh, ships die uh, 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 being destroyed in the sea. So we we seeing the loss of jobs because even with the trees being being bent and the green, uh, um, uh, uh, um, the green grass being bent, it means that um, there's some parts of the world whereby we are not gonna be able to plant food and 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 yield food. That means that the short there's there's going to be a shortage of food. There is the shortage of the jobs. And when you find those uh, ships are uh, um being being destroyed in the sea, that also means the shortage of jobs because um to buy another ship there is going to be too much. Some people might not be able to recover from that. So that means that, that uh, people are going to be losing their businesses. People are going to be losing their jobs. And there's going to be a short supply of seafood. And there's also going to be a short supply of agricultural food. 
when the trees and the green grass are being burned. Um, verse 10. And the third uh, sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and um, it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and uh, the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Um, do you wonder why um, the enemy is out there right now destroying people? The reason why he is rushing to kill people, especially Christians, especially Christians, he wants everyone to fall under him, to go to hell. That is why he's doing that, because he knows that there's going to be a time whereby the wrath of God is going to be poured out onto the earth and people will die. So he doesn't want people to repent. And those that have repented, he has deceived them into thinking that there is a pestilence out there that is out to kill them, that is out to destroy them. That is why now Christians are taking this poison. It's the plan of the enemy. It is the trap that the enemy has set for Christians. That is why now with that poison that they have taken, thinking that they are protecting themselves from the pestilence, that's the very same poison that is going to destroy them. And he wants that when Jesus Christ begins to pour out his, his, his wrath, when God begins to pour out his wrath, he would have, uh, you know, been done with, with most of the Christians. That is what he's thinking. God is merciful. God is loving. So we need to repent. We need to go back to him. We need to listen to him before we run into anything. Let us consult him. What is the spirit of God saying about everything that is going on in this world? <clears throat> Verse 12. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as um, the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. You know, some uh, some um, devils uh, incarnate. They um, they have made their own sun and their own moon, and some they want to dim the sun. Those that are making their own moon and their own sun. It could be because the devil knows the Bible. It could be they are making their own sun and their own moon because they know of the time that is coming. And they are making their own sun and the moon. They are thinking that that is going to save them from the work of God that is coming. And some of them, they want to dim the sun. You know why? It's because they know that such times are coming and it could be that those times are near. So that when that, those times begin to um, unfold, people will still not repent because they will think that, oh, okay, that uh, devil's incarnate did say that uh, he's going to dim the sun. So people will just go on as normal as, as usual. So open your eyes, are we? And when I talk about the devil's incarnate, you know, we hear Jesus Christ talking about the generation of vipers in the Bible. Where is that generation of vipers in this modern world, in this day and age? Where are they? They are out there. 
they are running the world they are ruling the world they are controlling the world and these are the people that we 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 know we 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 honor so much we we trust in them so much everything that they bring to us we 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 believe them we 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 trust them we we clap their hands we we so happy with everything that they are doing these are devils incarnate everything that they are bringing into this world it is to destroy people and if these people they really cared they really care cared how many people are dying out there because of hunger how many people are out there there's a lot of people that are, are sleeping hungry they wake up in the morning they don't know what to eat they go to bed they still don't have food to eat because there are no jobs and this has been an ongoing problem all these years it's not something that is beginning now it started a long time ago because i even believe that if there was a good uh, nutritional food that people were eating we won't need all these poisons that they are busy trying now to ingest into our systems. We wouldn't need those. We wouldn't. But because we Christians, we do not know the power that has been given to us. We have been given power. We have been given authority to subdue the earth. to subdue the earth under the blood of Jesus Christ, to take full dominion by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, to burn all these creepy crawlies of the kingdom of darkness. These creepy crawlies and these devils incarnate, they will not be having so much power and authority. So, we need to go back to a place of prayer. Praying without ceasing. Loving God. Worshipping Him. Day in, day out, 24-7. There shouldn't be um, a specific time of prayer. There, there shouldn't be that. Any time should be tea time. Praying. And asking God for guidance, for leadership, for courage. Because times that are coming, they are hard. And if we as Christians are so weak, are so weak that we can't even see the weapons of the devil that are being formed at us. How are we going to overcome in those days, in those uh, 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 perilous times? that are still coming. How are we going to overcome? We need to overcome. Whatever war that is uh, 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 waged at us, we have already overcome. We just need to stand firm. Whether we have our jobs or we don't have our jobs, whether we have um, our businesses or we don't have our businesses, we still need to go out there and, 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 and stand against the wiles of the enemy, the tricks and the traps of the enemy. We need to demolish them. We have weapons that are not carnal. You heard that our prayers, when they get to our God, they become something that is tangible. When they get to the spirit, they become tangible. That is why we hear that the word of God is a sword. It's the word. How does a word become a sword? When you speak it, it becomes a sword. It becomes a flaming sword. It becomes a sharp sword. That is what we should be using. We shouldn't be in this foolishness. Following like, you know, falling into the very same trap that the enemy has, 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 has made for us. Let's not follow uh, blindly Christians out there. Some of uh, some of the shepherds out there. It could be that they were never shepherds of our living God. Or it could be somewhere along the line they fell. And we should be able to see. 
when our shepherds have fallen from the grace of God and when the anointing has been removed from them, but they remain in the office, we need to be able to discern these things as children of God. I thank you so much for listening. Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, I ask you, Father, that you give us discernment, Lord. Give us discernment, Lord. And help us, Lord, to go back to our first love. And help us, Lord, to realize that you've given us weapons that are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. Help us, Lord, to realize that. And to be able to go back to our first love and draw all these weapons and begin to bash out the bands of the enemy, all the wickedness that is in this world, and become the generation of them that seek the Lord, that are speaking the commandments of God, that are overcoming by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Lord. Till next time, hoping that um, we allow the Spirit of God to work within us and the Spirit of God to open our eyes of the Spirit and to allow the Spirit of God to, um, to work within us that we change, that we repent from all our wickedness, from all our 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 iniquities. I thank you so much for listening.